guys, uh, I hope you're doing good and staying safe. So today I'm out in the woods enjoying some sun and being outdoors. But when I have been stuck at home, I have been thinking about all different kinds of good characters in TV shows. To make it more fun, my friend Michelle, she has also been thinking about her favorite characters in TV shows. We decided to pick five each. So in this video, we're going to talk about our 10 favorite TV show characters. Stay tuned. Hi guys, my name is Maria and I'm one of the creators behind another character. So if you love screenwriting, please consider subscribing to this channel. That would be awesome. So five characters. Hmm, oh, how am I gonna pick? There's so many of them. One of my favorites is Brooke Davis in Montreal Hill, played by the amazing actress Sophia Bush. First of all, no, you didn't. And second of all, where did you get it? The reason why I love Brooke Davis so much is because her character arc is amazing. She's probably the character that developed the most during the nine seasons of One Tree Hill. In the beginning of the show, she was this young woman in high school and she was the queen of the school and she was a cheerleader and she was kind of mean, but she did care for her friends. I used to be a bit of a bitch just for the sake of being one, but now I am a bitch for the sake of my friends and family. At the end of the show, she was out of high school. She ran a multi-billionaire, I don't know how much, but really successful business. She is strong, she is passionate about her work, she cares for her friends, she is so strong. Did I mention strong? She is also like this feministic icon. She believes in herself. I am Brooke Davis. Brooke Penelope Davis. Exactly. And she likes herself. And that was not really the case that much in the beginning. She was kind of insecure. Not being enough. Not good enough, not smart enough, not pretty enough. While the show progresses, she gets more and more confident and, you know, I wouldn't want to mess with her. I mean, she's so tough. Don't you dare twist my words around and make yourself feel like you are not a backstabbing, two-faced bitch, Peyton, because you are. I don't think anyone on television can cry and still look so beautiful. I am holding on for dear life, but I need you to need me back. She also saves Jamie in a car accident and almost get killed by herself. I mean, she is, wow, what a woman. So that's one of my favorites. So let's hear what Michelle has to say. Hi guys, Michelle here and my beautiful wallpaper. Nice to see you. So since Maria started on this whole badass character trail, I'll follow with a badass character of my own. I absolutely love season one of True Detective. And I'm being nice when I say that season two isn't very good and I won't elaborate further. But one thing that's amazing in season two is my first favorite character, Annie Bessarides. Hope I'm pronouncing that right. She's played by my girl crush, Rachel McAdams, and she's a total badass. Shut the fuck up. That character is played tremendously by McAdams. That character was the only reason I watched all of season two. She's good at what she does, she drinks, she sleeps around, and she doesn't give a shit. And she can handle that. Athena, I'm police. I know how to take care of myself. Which is good when bad guys are around. Speaking of bad guys, my next option has to be this witty, well-spoken, smart villain. Of course I'm talking about Raymond Redding. This is no way to rob a bank. This is, I, honestly, I don't know what the hell this is. I never really thought that I would like someone who has done so many horrible stuff. But the screenwriters of The Blacklist, they have done an amazing job that I like him, even if he has killed a thousand people. So if you want to write a character that's a villain and that you really like, Study the show Blacklist and their screenplays because they really know how to do it. I think it's because he's not really mean to people who doesn't deserve it and he's not one of those villains that goes around killing everyone and he doesn't really rape women. So I think that's one reason why I like him because he feels more human. And he's also so sarcastic and he's so he has a good relationship, like a nice chemistry with Denby and with Lizzie and I think that's also why it's easier to like him for the audience or at least for me. And as we're on the subject of shall we say morally corrupt characters we have my favorite draggy Jesse Pinkman 
from Breaking Bad, played by Aaron Paul. Where they live? The cows. What can I say about him? He's a fucker, a lovable fucker, and he's amazing. Everything he does just goes south, one way or the other. Need I mention the bathtub or the porta potty? But what I love about him is he always tries his best. He gets knocked down, but always gets back up and makes some more mess. But on a serious note, he is a character you really feel for. Ever since I met you, everything I have ever cared about is gone. He's everybody's punishing bag, but I do feel that he really strives to prove himself all the time. And yes, because he hides behind his Joe Gatorade me bitch facade, his backstory becomes so much more interesting. And he is a really dynamic character. My next choice is Arizona. Of course I'm talking about Grey's Anatomy and not the state in the US. You know, cutting off a penis isn't actually that big of a deal. And when it comes to Arizona, I think the reason why I love her so much is because I can really identify with her. She's probably one of the first gay characters on television that's not really stereotypical. She's like any random woman. Uh, so that's why I really like her too. She's kind, she's so sweet, and she has really great heart, and she works with children. She's a very hardworking doctor, and she goes after what she believes in. She really do sound like a role model. And like Kelly says, she has that magical smile. Because she has got this super magic smile. Yeah. So I'm really sad they wrote her off from Grey's Anatomy, but she's... Kelly wasn't there anymore, and I didn't really want her to be with anyone else. I guess it was the best thing to do. Well, I'm still sad and heartbroken that they broke up. Oh, by the way, that's a really good episode when they break up. Very well written, so emotional. And then we have another strong female character, the amazing Sarah Linden in The Killing, played by Mireille Annas. Where does the fire road lead to? This is my summer show. I've watched it every summer for seven years now. Probably because the rain in Seattle is like summer in Sweden. I feel right at home. Sarah Linden is my spirit animal in the sense that she doesn't give a shit about appearances. And I love it. We need this more on film and television. We need more female characters that shows it's okay to not wear a shred of makeup, to be good at your job, not to be paper thin, and to just be yourself. And just to be allowed to be a human being with flaws and negatives and darkness inside and to struggle. I miss this kind of character. I want to see it more, but I haven't really. As I sit here, I can't name another character like her. She's imperfect and raw and damaged and stubborn as f And it's hard work getting to know her, but it's worth it. She's complex and amazing. Daenerys Targaryen. Do I have to say more? I was born to rule the Seven Kingdoms, and I will. I must say that I'm not really pleased with her arc. She started like this slave that her brother sold, and she didn't get to say no. I give him a queen, and he gives me an army. I don't want to be his queen. I felt so bad for her, but as the story progresses in Game of Thrones, she gets more and more belief in herself, and she gets more and more power and she takes over more and more and she is absolutely one of the most powerful characters on the show. Then, in the last season, yeah, so I have to say no more, but I really like the character and I used to feel sad how it ended for her and I think she was a really feministic icon. I guess the power just got too great to her and I think her evil sides got there too fast, so I, I think they should have needed at least another season. Um, but anyway, I really liked watching her grow. I really enjoyed her as a character. Talking about characters with power, I very recently watched HBO's The Outsider. I fell in love with the character Hall gave me, played by Cynthia Riva. 845 cc engine, discontinued. 1967. Talk about a complex and unique character. No one's Stephen King, she's probably a sidekick, but they don't really specify that on the show, if I remember correctly. <laughs> Nevertheless, she notices things and sees connections others would miss, and she's smart out of this world, and she doesn't feel like she fits in anywhere, which I find heartbreaking. And it really got me thinking about all the people who try to live up to the ideals of society, of how you should act and think, to fit in. And I just love this character because she doesn't fit in. 
And she is herself, but she still doesn't seem happy because she doesn't feel accepted by society. She thinks there's something wrong with her, with who she is and how she thinks. But as I watch it, that saddens me because I wish she wouldn't because she's amazing. In my world, there is no normal. There's just different shades of fucked up. And that's okay. We're all different. There is no normal. I have to pick Rachel because I do really love Friends and I do love all the characters, but I do really love Jennifer Aniston who plays Rachel and she was a huge part of my life when I was growing up and she still is. I like big butts and I cannot lie! Rachel is so you funny and the show itself is so funny, but picking shows is for another video. I really like Rachel's character arc. In the beginning she's so spoiled and she can hardly take care of herself. Well, maybe I don't need your money. Wait, wait, I said maybe! But she grows and she gets more and more independent as the show goes on. And like I said, she is so funny. God, get out! Get out, get out, get out! And I think they did a really good job on the character arc for this character. Because at the end of season 10, she was like a totally different person. And by the way, I was so on Team Ross and Rachel and all their story was so much fun to watch. We were on a break! And I was so relieved seeing them back together at the end of the show because, ooh, it would have killed me if they were not together at the end. One of my favorite TV shows is Terminator, the Sarah Connor Chronicles. And it just crushes my heart. It only got two seasons. But my favorite character is, of course, the Terminator. Cameron Phillips played by Summer Gao. <laughs> I just find that show so interesting. Not just because of the awesome Terminator fights, but also because of the theme of the series, which for me explores the value of human life and sort of what, what constitutes a human being. And an interesting question arises is if you can learn to be human, which is very interesting with this character because she constantly fools you into thinking she's more, thinking that she has feelings in the way she talks and the way she acts. And it's very interesting how they explore that character because she is self-aware and she knows she's a machine, but she can also adapt, evolve and learn. And she learns that human beings are illogical, unpredictable and messed up. And she learns of what's subjectively right or wrong in the point of view of a human being. And I love the character and how she shows that. So over to Maria, I'll be back. So these are our 10 favorites, but we do have a bonus because we realized that we nearly had no one in common, but we actually did have one. So we decided that we had to put her on because she's one of our newest favorites. <sighs> this is so boring. Oh, hi again. We're on a bonus round, Villanelle. I absolutely adore this character and Jodie Comer, who brings her to life in such a wonderful way. She's like this insane, crazy child <laughs> running around with a gun, killing people. No remorse or morale at all. Just everything is a game to her, and she gets bored instantly. This would be a really bad way to go. Stop it! She's just another villain that I fell in love with. She's so smart, she's crazy, and she's so much fun. And how Judy Comer plays her, oh my gosh, she's amazing. She really has crazy eyes and she really looks dangerous, which she is. And I love her laugh. <laughs> she can be quite charming and it's really hard not to like her. And she goes around killing people. What is wrong with me? She's a little psycho and I love her. My absolute favorite moment in season one is when she gets smuggled into a Russian prison, I think and her boss is saying goodbye to her. And it's supposed to be this emotional scene and he touches her cheek and he's sad and she licks his hand. <laughs> and it's so good. It's exactly what a child would do and I love it. So these are our 10, okay, 11 favorites in TV shows. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And please consider subscribing. And if you want to learn how to write characters that are hopefully as amazing as those mentioned in this video, please watch this video on how to get to know your characters and create them.
Stay safe, everybody. See you next time.